do forever. Yeah. I've paid the greatest price so you could experience the joys of heaven. I am with you so that peace can rule your heart. I know the yearnings of your soul. I hear the silent cries of desire. Nothing escapes my notice. Nothing will separate you from my love. The women, the, the women that came to the conference this weekend, it was amazing. It was very transforming. Um, and we learned a ton about just God and his goodness. And I know sometimes it feels like we're invisible. Sometimes it can feel like there's nobody in that pit with me. But one thing that I know is that Jesus went to the cross to pay for those things. And he loves us more than we could ever imagine. He, and he loves, us, he loves us deeper than anyone could ever love you. And this weekend we talked about the God-sized hole. Everybody has a God-sized hole. It's what you fill it with. Are you gonna fill it with food? Are you gonna fill it with drugs? Are you gonna fill it with, what are you gonna fill it with? Because you have good water, you have, you have godly water, you have things that you can put in that hole that's of God, or you have the junk of the world that you can put in that hole. But what's gonna replace that hole? Only Jesus. Jesus is the only one that can replace that hole. So let's worship. Yeah. Amen. Oh, you do not set up by the 
Hold to my church.
want that you, your church is still like worship to God this morning. Get the microphone. Come on. Come on, come on. Yeah, 5, 10, and 11. Come on. Come on. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to our God. And they will reign upon the earth. Angels exalt the Lamb. Amen, amen. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels yes. around the throne. Yes. And the yes. living creatures and the elders. Yes. And all Come on. numbered Come on. around were fires and fires and thousands and thousands. Amen. 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 for this very special occasion. And I think we could think about, about it in our own life, kind of like Thanksgiving. It was a big deal. They ate the same foods at this occasion. They always had lamb and they always had the unleavened bread with no yeast in it. And like going to grandma's house for Thanksgiving, they would always try to get to Jerusalem for this occasion. So when, the, when Jesus told the disciples we're going to Jerusalem for the Passover, they knew exactly what was gonna happen. They'd done it many times in their lifetime. But then something happened. And as Jesus was around the table with them and they are doing the, the normal ritual that had always been done to symbolize what the, the the Israel, Israelites being um, set free by God from Egypt. And this has been, the Passover was something they celebrated and the children would even be instructed to ask, why are we doing this? And then the parents would reply, we are doing this because God wants us to remember how he saved us and, and set us free from the Egyptians where we were slaves. And now Jesus does something new. He says to them, he lifts up the bread and he breaks it with them. 
they've seen this many times, and he says, take this and eat it. It is my body broken for you. And this is totally new to them. And then he takes the cup and he says, take this and pass it around and drink from it. This is my blood that I shed for you. And he talks about the new covenant. The old covenant started with Abraham and now he's starting something new. And it is, he was about to go and die on the cross like the lamb that was sacrificed for the sacrificed in Egypt, where they took the blood and they painted it on their door. And the night that God came, the, the spirit of death came to Egypt, anyone who had that blood on their door, God passed over, or the spirit of death passed over, and no one died in that household. Jesus is that blood yes. that we paint and drink on our hearts yes. and believe, and we have this new covenant with him forever. Do you all have your bread? All right, we just thank you, God, that we have your body and this remembrance of you and what you did for us forever. Yeah, you can eat it. And then we'll take our cups and give thanks for the blood that was shed for our eternal freedom. Amen. You can drink it.
Jesus and God have the power of creation in their tongue. That means that everything you say can become real in your life. So when we're praying and singing, why should I fear? The evidence is here. Yes, I'm not fear. There's no fear in my life. I've just declared that by singing that. And we're asking God to reign with his wind and his spirit and fill us. And he will because we ask and we have the power of creation in our, in our vocal cords. So if we are saying those things, and you may not think about, oh, I just sang a song, but you know what? You can be intentional about that. You can be so intentional that fear is gone, that chains are broken, that we are an army. All right? Miss Alicia? Yes. Doing our announcements. Thank you. You get to see me twice. Twice in the same <laughs> I don't even know who it was. It was a girl's voice. I heard that. Ashley? No? Yeah, you love me. Lisa? Yeah, you love me. Well, I know. <laughs> Amanda? No, it's Angela. No, Angela. Well, anyway, You're walking I love your way back. That's right. <laughs> I've been here for a lot of years, and I'm still coming back. Um, and this is my home, and I'm not leaving. So you're stuck with me. We have three more classes left. If you've missed them and you want to catch up, they're online. You can go to the Rochester website. Um, I can put it on the Facebook page, um, and you can catch up that way if you've missed them. If you want to come for the last three, you can still catch up. It's phenomenal, phenomenal information. Rod's an awesome speaker, um, and we're very blessed that he's taking the time to come all the way to Rochester to teach us. So we have class Tuesday night, and then the next week it goes to Thursday night, and then the last one is on April 5th. So we have the 22nd, the 31st, and the 5th. Because there's a BLN thing in there that's on a Tuesday, so they have to move it to a Thursday. Um, and there's a meal next week. The clipboard is on the table if somebody wants to grab it and get it passing around. Amanda, would you do that for me? And who knows the ways to give? You guys have heard this? How do we give? PayPal, Venmo, text. With a cheerful give. heart. There's an envelope. And Eric's got it. You give from the heart. What, why do we give to God? Because he gives it back to us? No. We give to God because we have an overflowing of what he's given us. He has blessed us richly, so we give out of that overflow. You've heard me say that before. I've done offering before, but I still stand by it because God will bless you, yes, but he doesn't bless you because you give. He blesses you because he loves you. Right. And that doesn't change. So this girl over here, this Kristen, I've known her for two decades. She used to sit on my, my couch as a teenager and cry and carry on because the world was bad. You know, and we still do that some days. We still, you know, we still have our days that we do that. Um, she and I have a very organic relationship that God has developed over the years. Um, I've helped her with her kids, and we help each other through spots that we can't get through any other way. And um, we sharpen each other, and we don't put up with each other's crap. And when we have crap, we call it out on each other. And you need somebody in your life that will call you out on your stuff. And so we do. Um, lately, she's been calling me a meddling mama. And that's probably true. There are times where that's true. Um, but I think we all need that in our lives, too. We all need somebody that will call us out and say, hey, you're not living your best life. And I've had people in this church that have done that for me. And Kristen has had people that have done that from her, and that's why she can do what she's doing today. The only reason she's doing what she's doing today is because God's brought her through the messes and continues to bring, through, bring her through the messes. It's not because she's all together. It isn't. It's not because we're perfect. It's not because she is any better than the rest of us. It's because God called her today to, to give us a word. 
So we're all gonna stand up and we're gonna appreciate Kristen, but this is what I want you to do. This is a Pastor Steve thing. I want you to put your hands out and I want you to pray over Kristen and I want you to say peace, power, and presence. Peace, power, and presence. Kristen. who also come here on occasion um, are in Florida right now enjoying some warm weather and my cousin's wedding. Um, I have two other brothers and an older sister. Um, and I've grown up here. I've seen the highs, I've seen the lows of this church family. I've seen faces come, I've seen faces go. And there were some seasons that were really, really hard for me to stay. There were some things that happened in this place, just like in every one of your homes. There are things that happened that hurt. But the one thing I know in all the years of being here, and all the times I looked at God like, really? Can I go now? Can I find something else? I could never find something different that felt like home. When you find home, when you find a body of people who love you and cherish you, who stick with you through the highs and the lows, you found a precious treasure. Trust them to love you. Trust them with the mess because that's how we get through it. That's how you go from an emotional teenager facing the highs and lows of teenage life, sitting on a woman's couch, because life sucks. And sometimes you just don't want to get up and do it over again in the morning. Been there, done that. There have been times where I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to look at another sunrise because life hurt. But when you've got a family around you, when you've got people around you that love you, you found gold. Trust them to walk with you. Trust them with those places that hurt. Gross things grow in the dark. Jim Peasley, I love you. If you're watching, thank you. I owe a huge part of my journey to Jim Peasley. He is one of the, the voices that has spoken into my brokenness and called light into dark places. But he says, gross things grow in the dark. When we hide, just like that leftover meal something or other got shoved way into the back of your fridge, and you open that container, you're like, oh my gosh. Oh, I think I'm just going to throw a whole container. Yeah. Yeah. Those things go in the dark. Stop yeah. hiding in the dark. Stop hiding that thing in the dark. Find someone that you can trust, that you can talk to. Because the minute you bring that thing into the light, it's amazing how fast it dissipates. There were things that I sat across from Jim Peasley and I thought, I can't say this. I can't say this. I'm not really going to say this to him. This hurt so bad. That container has been sitting there for so many years. It's, it's awful. But the minute I opened the lid and I said, this really hurts. But I need to be honest about this part of my life. Come on now. I need to be honest about this part of my life because this really hurts and I don't know what to do. All of a sudden, there was freedom. 
there was light. And you can't tell that to everybody because not everybody has earned the right to hear your story. Don't go tell everybody your story because not everyone has earned the right to hear it. But find, and I think that's a, I think that's a Brene Brown. That's not original to me, sorry guys. I know it sounds awesome. Not everybody has earned the right, but find the person who has. Find someone, whether it's a licensed counselor, licensed therapist, a person who does sozo, a minister, a friend, a parent, a spouse. Find someone that has earned the right to hear your story. Because when you release those things and you give them to God, he can give you light and life back. Angela, if you want to go ahead and pull up, oh, Mona's actually back there. Pull up that first slide. Um, so, a couple weeks ago, Libby confronted me and said, um, what are your thoughts about speaking while we're gone? Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Um, people see me up here. Most Sundays, you see me on the worship night. People see me all the time, but they never hear from me. And there's a value in hearing someone's story and knowing the struggle that they walk through. Because it looks pretty good up here on a Sunday morning. My life sounds pretty put together. I've got it all right. I sing the right words. I, I do the stuff. It looks great, right? But I'm just like you. I'm just like you. I've walked through my stuff. So I, uh, I had this great plan. I, I called. I got some advice from Lexi Molina. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I've never done this before. How do, I, how do I create a message? How do I do this? And so I started. And God gave me a word. God is my anchor. Yep. And my anchor is in the Lord. And I followed that for a while. And then I went to this awesome women's retreat. And they said, sometimes we need to take our mustard seed of faith. Our basket of bread and fish. And we need to lay it down. Because sometimes we are filling our life with something that's not God. It can even be God. We can praise God, we can pray, we can study, we can write a message, all to love God. And it can be really, really good stuff. I shared this with Pam yesterday at the women's retreat. Maybe I'll get to share this with all of you. It's good stuff. But yesterday, I realized I had put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. It doesn't sound so right when you put it in emphasis and syllable. It's good stuff and this will glorify God someday. But I realized I needed to lay it down. Because God had a different message for today. Right on. His question for every one of you today is who are you beholding? Take a minute and think about that. Think about your week. Think about this morning. Who are you beholding? Go to the next slide. The glory of God is a human fully alive. We are the crown of his creation. We're his favorite. He, I was listening, I think it's Stephen Furtick, was talking about creation. He spoke and this happened. He spoke and that happened. But when it came to us, he got down and dirty in the dirt. 
Because we're I his favorite. We have something that all of creation lacks. Like the women shared this morning, we have a God-sized hole because God formed us. He is in us. We are all him. Every part of our substance and our being came from God. We can't divorce ourselves from God because it kills us. Who are you beholding? The glory of God is a man fully alive and to be alive consists in beholding God. All my life, this has been one of my worst enemies. To this day, this has been one of my worst enemies. Both the thing and the person in it. Who are you beholding? Who is it that you see? That's a hard question. That's a painful question, and if it hurts right now, I'm in the boat, because obviously I'm crying. <laughs> You're not alone if this hurts right now. But I am looking at you and I am saying, it's okay, because I'm right in the boat with you. It's painful sometimes to look in the mirror. Who are you beholding? Growing up, I never felt beautiful. That wasn't something that was spoken in a way that I was able to hear and understand. People told me, oh, you're so pretty. But there was a depth of revelation that was never received by my heart. So this hurt. And many times when I woke up in the morning, what I saw hurt. It wasn't good enough. I wasn't good enough. And I can't tell you the times that that lie has poisoned my life. I still to this day fight that lie. Guys, when you see Libby and Sean up here, when you see Terry or Alicia or Rebecca, any of us leaders, the people that you look to, Tyler, any of us that, that look like we've got all together, Tim, Mona, Chris, the worship team. I certainly Please. <laughs> Please don't ever forget that we're people too and we have stories. Amen. And just because we look good, we look like we've got it all put together, there's nothing different other than we have found our people. Yeah. We yeah. have found our people. We found something that we can yeah. look at and say, you know what? I need to own this. 
Help me own this. How do I get out of this? God created us for community. God created us Amen. to work together as a people. Yes. What I have accomplished, he will do for you. Amen. But if you don't know what he's accomplished in me. Come on. Right? Come on. Yeah. And the same is true for you. There's a, there's a quote I heard as a kid. The, the greatest way to have a friend heard it the greatest way to have a friend or the, the quickest way to have a friend whatever the the adjective is there is to be a friend find a way in yourself to be the support for someone else be willing to share your story <coughs> because we need each other we need each other Who are you beholding? Who are you beholding? Ephesians 3, 16 through 21 in the Amplified. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his Holy Spirit in your inner being. Right now, that's my prayer for every single one of you. I can see from a few expressions in here that this is this is landing. This is this is meddling. Okay, and so know that my prayer this morning is that out of His glorious riches, He will strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit in your inner being. Because, let's face it, in and of myself, I can't make this all work. I didn't figure any of this stuff out to, to bring my life to this place. I was just obedient. I was just obedient to put myself in relationship with people who were going to call me up and not call me out. So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, rooted and grounded, and that's already been done. That was done in the garden. Christ was crucified before the foundations of the earth. It's already done. God has rooted and grounded us in Christ. Until we pick up the mirror. I didn't disappear. Did I? <laughs> None of you are toddlers in here. You all have object permanence. I didn't disappear. Neither did God. But there are times, there are times when we pick up the mirror. Where'd you go, God? All I see is, yeah, yeah. Because we're beholding the wrong thing. So that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep the love of Christ Amen. and Amen. to know Amen. to know love that surpasses knowledge. None 
none of this is new. This is what God did back in the garden. Amen. His love was deep and wide and high for us. He gave it all for us. that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. He's not out to look for dirty secrets. It's not about your stuff. It's not about the stuff that I saw in the mirror. My problem wasn't the baggage the shame, the secrets, the hiding. The problem was, I looked in the mirror. I took my eyes off of God. Who are you beholding? Life looks pretty miserable some days when you look in the mirror, doesn't it? Who are you beholding? God didn't create us to look at ourselves. He created us in his image. We are to see Christ in one another. So when I look at Rebecca, I see all of Jesus in Rebecca. Redeemed and powerful. When I look at my dad, I see a man of God who loves his family, who's withstood many trials, and is still here today. Amen. It's not easy some days, is it? It's not easy some days. But the less we look at ourselves in the mirror and the more we keep our eyes where they're supposed to be, the more that we keep our eyes fixed on the surpassing love of God, the more life makes sense. The more healing and wholeness we find in our own selves. Now to him who is able, it's not about me. It doesn't say to Kristen who is able. That him is referring to someone else. Referring. Oh boy. <laughs> Country. Just a little bit. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power at work within us. Oh. God, I just want to feel good about my body. God, I just want to love my kids. God, I, God, I, God, I. What's the truth that God has already spoken? I am beautiful. I am uniquely and wonderfully made. I am a powerful mama, a loving mama. Are there days I don't look like it? Yeah. <laughs> Just saying. There are days my patients run this thing, but it happens. But that doesn't change who I am. That's what I do. The fact that I was impatient with my babies or annoyed with my husband doesn't change the fact that I am a good wife and I am a loving mama. You are who God says you are. You are who God says you are. Amen. Yeah. It's what he does in us. And I want you to hear today that he wants so 
much more than you can imagine. Come on. If you would have asked me when I was a teenager, would I be standing in front of a church of people and talking on Facebook Live? I would have said, uh, I don't like speech class. I took a speech class in college. I hated every minute of it. I did not think that I knew the word and scripture enough. I wasn't a, a pastor's kid. I didn't go to seminary. I don't have the training. I don't have the qualifications. Uh-uh, not going to happen. And here I am. Because God had a message that he has been forming in me since I was a child. Since before I was born, he had a plan for me. And he knew that me being here today, looking at all of you, sharing my story, could change someone's life. That's immeasurably more than I asked for. <laughs> I just wanted to have a nice home, have a husband, a family, maybe work a good job. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, imagine, according to his power at work within us, to him be the glory in the church, and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. amen. To him be the glory in the church, in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. amen. Every Every time you conquer because you chose not to look in the mirror and you chose to look at your father's face. For some of you, Jesus is holding you right here. Child, you are worthy of love and belonging. You are worthy of the gifts and callings that I have placed in your life. Not because of you, but because of me, because I put those things in you for the glory of God to stand on the earth. To God be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations forever and ever. Last slide. So the question is simple. Who are you beholding? When your kids are frustrating you, who are you beholding? When your spouse just did that thing, I'm seeing a couple spouses duck out of the room. Who? are you beholding? When that person fails you again and again and again and again, who are you beholding? Who are you looking at? Because I can guarantee you, your kids are going to frustrate you again, your husband's going to do that thing again, your wife's going to do that thing again, that person is going to fail you again. We're all human. And when we look to each other to be God, we're all messed up. Yeah. Yeah. You're not going to fix my problem, but God in you, when I allow Amen. God to work through you, that's when my problems change. Amen. But I have to look for God. And when I look in the mirror, I'm not seeing God. Who are you beholding? How do I land this plane, God? <laughs> I'm a planner and preparer to a certain extent and then I fly by my, the seat of my pants it's kind of weird it, it's kind of both and and there are times where I had so many notes and yesterday I was writing more notes because I needed to have my notes all together and I needed to make sure that I wasn't wrapping around rabbit trails and confusing everybody because I'm lost and I've got so many things to say But sometimes that becomes a God, too. Right. And sometimes we don't have it all put together. Sometimes we don't have all the answers. 
Sometimes God doesn't give us the plan. He just gives us the next right step. And I'm pretty sure that the first place he wants to start, wants us to start, is who are you looking at? Who are you beholding? Eric, if you can throw on just some um, instrumental. I think my Spotify was up on that computer. If you just pull up um, some instrumental worship. I want to take a moment. And if you're willing to get a little messy and willing to trust the people that are around you, that we're all here for the same reason. We all want to be healed and whole. And if you're willing to give God that ounce of vulnerability, that mustard seed, he will bless it and multiply it. So I really want to take some time for you to just look in the mirror and ask yourself the question, <coughs> who are you beholding? When you look at yourself, do you see Jesus? Thank you, Holy Spirit, because that was one of the things I thought of this morning that I knew was going to be a powerful point. I just hope forgot it. When you look in the mirror, the problem isn't seeing yourself. The problem is when you leave Jesus. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay to look in the mirror. It's a good thing. It's healthy. It helps make sure that our hair is in you know, the right spot. Okay. It's okay to look in the mirror. It's a healthy thing. To take that internal dialogue, to take that internal introspective look at yourself. Say, okay, God, I invite God. God, is there something I need to work on? So I want you to take a moment right now and I want you to do that. I want you to look inside and ask yourself, ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, is there some place in my life where I'm not beholding you? And I ask right now, God, Jesus, that you would show us those places. I'm going to switch to the keys, Eric, um, and, and switch to the mic back there for just a second. So hold with me, guys. We're all professionals around here. Wow, sorry, Facebook Live. Oh, that won't work either. Oh, man. Yes, Mona. Thank you.
Jesus. Where in my life right now am I looking at something other than you? Where am I beholding something that didn't come from you? is not complicated. It's just remembering who you're looking at in the mirror. So when you go from here, I'm not going with you. I'm going home to my house. <laughs> but when life seems like it's falling apart and it's not working, stop and ask yourself, Jesus, who am I looking at in the mirror? And Jesus, where are you? What truth do you want to remind me of that I've forgotten? And just make an exchange. It's as simple as that. God just wants our best. Because us living our best glorifies him. The glory of God is a man fully alive. And we can't be alive if we are not beholding our Creator. So I'm going to pass things off to Mona. I thank you. I thank you for honoring me. you to know 
He wants you to know who you are in Him, what your strengths are, know what your weaknesses are, so that in those areas, He can be more for you. I used to have fear in such a horrible way from the time I was three years old. And when I found out that I didn't have to live in fear anymore, that I could be full of faith and love and joy in the Holy Ghost, and fear would not be controlling me anymore. I had to look God in the face and say, God, your love is greater than all that fear. Your joy is in me so that I don't have to be afraid anymore. So if you have an area that you feel like you just you need prayer for, that you want someone else to stand up for you, to stand with you, to stand beside you, to help you overcome something, please grab somebody. Please don't let it ride. Don't hide. Don't let it be. It's not in what you do, but it's who you are. Amen. Amen.